Hi everyone, it's Rachel, and I am here today to do my July wrap-up. This is the first time I've done a specific month wrap-up, so we'll see how this goes. I'm doing this because Meg, who has been doing the Tome Infinity and Beyond Challenge readathons, requested that we do this, and so I was like, okay, I'll do this. For the Tome Infinity and Beyond Challenge, I read a total of four books. Um, there were 22 prompts, and these four books actually covered 13 prompts. First, I want to show you the map. Make sure I... So this is the map that we were provided that we could color. So for the four books that I completed, I actually named the... Okay, so number four, I named Eden. Number 19, I named Mickey. Number 15, I named Sanctuary Moon. And number 16, I named Improbable. So I'm going to quickly go over what those books are and how they, what other prompts that I determined that they worked for. Um, so the first book I read was This Is How You Lose the Time War. And this was specifically for prompt four, which was a book based with time elements. Oh, sorry, and This Is How You Lose the Time War is written by Amal Elmotar and Max Gladstone. But this book also completes um, a book, read a book set on Earth for number nine. And it can also work for number 10, read a book promoting diversity. Because in this world, you have agents from Garden and agents from the agency. And the garden are more entwined with nature and the agency is more entwined with tech. So very different bodily structures um, in that as well. Again, I'm gonna go back. So for uh, this is how you lose the time war. I rated this five stars. I really enjoyed the interplay um, between red and blue. I love the detail and description that came with the letters and how they were so vivid and you could feel like you were there in the place where they were reading them and finding them. Now, even though I've rated it five stars, it was by no means perfect. So a lot of the interplay, especially at the beginning, that helps move things along is each one is trying to thwart the other one and then they find that they're not able to. And this happens like really fast and it keep, like gets the story going and then all of a sudden blue is stuck in one location. And you get a little bit, it, I don't know, I felt like it completely slowed the story down. And not in a way that it needed to be. And then from while it slowed down, all of a sudden red and blue are in love. I didn't quite buy that. The novella didn't invest enough time for me to get to that jump. I believe that that could happen in the future as they keep going. I didn't have enough setup for it to work for me. I am not insta-love, and this is not an insta-love story anyway, but I need more time to buy into a romance. But otherwise, I really enjoyed it. So the second book that I finished was Rogue Protocol by Martha Wells. This is in her Murderbot Diary series um, in the first novella section. So back to number two. So with Exit Strategy, this book was specifically chosen or not exit strategy. Now for Rogue Protocol, this book was specifically chosen for the prompt number 19, a book featuring robots and androids. Um, but it also works for number two, A Molten Planet, Be Quick and Read a Novella. It also works for number 10, a book uh, promoting diversity, because you have not only the androids and the humans, but all spectrums. And it also works for number 20, a book that features space travel. So Rogue Protocol is novella number three. And this is where Murderbot has decided to be proactive and go take care of something that she believes, or not she, Murderbot is going, is being proactive and going to jump in and investigate something that they think will help the humans from book one with their case against Grey Chris. It's kind of hard to go into a lot more detail if you haven't already read it, but yeah. 
And so for Rogue Protocol, I also rated this five stars. I enjoyed it immensely. I love the detail of how Murderbot processes things and the logic that they go through. And so book number three that I finished was Exit Strategy. And this was specifically chosen for prompt number 15, uh, which was a book that is part of a larger series. You know, it's book number four. Um, after this is the last novella by Martha Wells, and then what just came out this year is the first full length novel. But this prompt also works for prompt number two be quick and read a novella. Um, it also works for book promoting diversity. It also works for a book featuring space travel and a book featuring androids. So, in Exit Strategy, this is where we see Murderbot come back into contact with the humans from the first book and how Murderbot is dealing with that. Or how Murderbot decides to deal with that. Because I just really like myself some Murderbot. And I'm very excited to read the next one. The I'm very excited to read the novel. I have not yet gotten it, but it will be soon. So the fourth book that I read that completed things for this challenge was Middle Game by Shauna McGuire. And I've heard more people talk about this as a fantasy, but bear with me. I'm going to explain why it works for the science fiction. Um, so I specifically chose Middle Game for prompt number 16, which is a book with over 500 pages. But it also works for, number one, a book that has fire in the cover because the cover has the Hand of Glory. So when I looked at the cover, I recognized that this was the Hand of Glory because I've seen it in other stories. And this is the hand that thieves and murderers use to stay silent, or the hand candle. Um, but Middle Game also works for a book set on Earth. Um, it also works for a book promoting diversity. It also works, I'm also counting it for 11, a, a read a book with a fantastical mytho mythology or retelling elements because the hand of glory is used in a lot of fantasy stories. Um, or a lot of fairy tale fantastical, that's where I at least first came or started reading about the Hand of Glory. And it also works for uh, 18, a book with a disaster or a dystopian, because there are earthquakes in this book. Now, oh, and it works for number four, time travel. So Middle Game is focused on um, twins, Roger and Dodger, who've been separated at birth, and they and they discover as kids that they have a connection so even though they're on opposite coasts in the united states they end up learning how to talk to each other in their minds and they start connecting and the adults around them don't notice right away as you go on that's where you pick up on the time travel elements so i'm trying to think of a really good way to like describe this book otherwise because yeah, I'm just really bad about describing books without going into spoilers. So Dodger is, so both Roger and Dodger are geniuses. Roger's forte is languages and the written word, and Dodger's forte is math. And now this is going to be a spoiler section, so skip ahead if you don't want to hear this. But with the language, Roger also has the ability to persuade people to control them to do things that he wants. And Dodger has the ability to time travel. You should use the math to go back to an earlier point in time so that they can try other options when things aren't working. Now, Dodger can't do this alone. Roger has to tell Dodger. And so that's why they're integral to each other. And you find out that they are two parts of a doctrine that is a doctrine for the universe and that this doctrine has been made into human flesh so that a man or a creation can control it and that's why they were separated as children which is to make them reliant so that when he came back into their lives they would be grateful to him and want to do his bidding and it doesn't work out like that because honestly they were given too much freedom and they became their own people and he left them alone too long without trying to talk to them. So 
for Metal Game, I actually rated it four stars. It was a good book, but there were still some elements that didn't work for me. There's some characterization that wasn't perfect. Why else did I rate this four? Yes. So there, um, also something I marked it down on was atmosphere because setting was not really brought out and this is a character driven book. Um, the writing, plot logic, all of that was great, but while things are happening, I would have to keep reminding myself where they were sitting, whether it was in an apartment or in someone's house, um, that... I, I had a hard time visualizing where I was, and so that's why I marked it down for atmosphere. But it's still a good book. And so then during the month of July, there's also Ariel and Raylene had their reading rush, and so I chose three books for that, two of which were already on my list for the Tome Infinity readathon, and then one other. The one other was the only book that I finished for the reading rush. Um, and that was Who Gets the Drumstick by Helen Beardsley. And this is the memoir of how Helen and Frank Beardsley met after the death of their spouses. They both had large families and how they found themselves to be in love and decided that they were, or, and they worked through blending their families together. This is the book that inspired Yours, Mine, and Ours that Henry Fonda and Lucille Ball played and then later Rene Russo and Dennis Quaid, though the Rene Russo and Dennis Quaid took only the fact they had large families and completely went off the wall. Um, the Lucille Ball and Henry Fonda one is closer to the book. You still get the flavor and the heart of the book. I didn't read it this time, but this is a book I own and I like to reread. One of the things I think this book does really well is show how religion does affect people. Um, both Helen and Frank are Catholic, and they do talk about their faith in their memoir. Well, and Helen talks about it in the memoir, and how it helped them to get to the place where when they met, they were willing to think that, yes, we can blend our families. And then it doesn't only focus on the meeting and falling in love, it also talks about afterwards what happened in those first few years of marriage how does blend, what does blending the family look like? How did the kids uh, interact with each other? And I really enjoyed getting to see that. And then the last book that, or the last story that I finished in July was A Strange and Certain Light by G.V. Anderson. And this is, I got it in an ebook fashion from the science fiction and fantasy magazine. Um, I also rated this four stars. It's a, it's a solid story. And it follows Mary as she is newly married, trying to escape a past and past circumstances. And so she has jumped into a hasty marriage. And her and her husband, uh, Mary, are on their honeymoon. And she realizes on her honeymoon that you don't always get to escape what you have left behind. And sometimes what you thought you needed to escape is actually what is needed. In your future. At least that's what I got from it. And so I really did enjoy this. It wasn't my favorite short story. One of the reasons I was reading this was also because it's one of the nominations for Nebula. So that was another check mark for me. So that finishes what I actually finished. I thought it would be fun to include in this wrap up the three books that I started and have not finished. So just so you guys know, um, before I guess I go into the books that I am currently, that I've started, I just didn't finish in uh, July. I'm a mood reader, and so I jump between things. And so, so sometimes, as being a mood reader, sometimes I'll start something, I'll be enjoying it, but when I put it down, when I go to decide what to pick up next, I think, I think of how much time I have to read and how much I want to be invested in something. And that helps me choose what I'm going to read. So I, for the, and all three, and uh, all three of these were for the Tome Infinity uh, challenge. One was Dragon Pearl by Yoon Han Lee, and this is a middle grade um, with the Korean elements to it. I'm, I am really enjoying it. I'm about 
six chapters into it. Uh, another book that I started but did not finish, this was uh, also for the Reading Rush. It was War Girls. And I don't remember the author, but the picture will be up here in a moment. And I got 10 chapters into this, so I was ready to start chapter 11. Really enjoying this. This is a future YA dystopian in Africa. That's about really where I'm into it. I It's following two found sisters at this point in time. And then the third book that I have started is The City in the Middle of the Night by Charlie Jane Anders. I'm a, I think I've just started part three of the book. Really enjoying that as well. Um, it's also a science fiction. I'd say it's more new adult than why, but why it could count. Um, and I would place it in that because you have a couple characters who are younger, um, more like college age, and they are trying to decide basically how to work in the world that they have, how they, yeah, they're trying to decide how to work in the world that they're given. Um, it, the book starts off in Zeofant, I think is how you say the name, the city of Zeofant, which is very rigid and very uh, rules oriented, very much um, everyone is cookie cutter and should eat at the same time, eat the same thing, sleep at the same time, work at the same time. And there's not a lot of, there, people aren't encouraged to be individualistic or artistic. And so that's where you start off with Sophie and Bianca. And then later you meet Mouth, who is a part of a traveling band who is traveling between cities, which is extremely rare in Zeofont doesn't like people like that anymore, even though people inside Zeofont appreciate the goods that are brought in. Um, it's more of a black market kind of thing. So that's, those are the three books that I'm currently working on. Or I've, those are the three books that I started in August. Nope, I started in July. Hopefully I will finish in August. If not, I will definitely finish them this year. I hope. Anyway, thanks for watching my July wrap-up. Uh, this was kind of fun to do. Maybe I will continue to do official wrap-up videos here in the future. I'm not sure yet, though. You all have a great day, and if you have read any of these books or want to talk about them, please write them in the comments down below. Thanks. Bye.